third grade math, lesson 11.5, measure area. As we learned in video 11.4, the one right before this, area is the number of unit squares needed to cover a flat surface. And that video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it. We can find the area of a plane figure by estimating how many square units are needed to cover the figure, or using unit tiles, making sure there are no gaps or overlaps, or counting the number of square units covering the figure. If this is one square inch, that means it's an inch this way, an inch this way, this way, and this way. All the sides are one inch. That means it's one square inch. This would be five square inches used correctly. This would be the right way. We've got them all nice and neat with the sides touching. This would be the wrong way. This would be incorrect. See how these are overlapping and these are overlapping and there's a big gap here and a big gap there. We need to make sure there are no gaps or overlaps when we use the unit squares. We can model using inch squares to cover the surface of a rectangle. Each square tile is one square inch. So let's do this top one. We're going to put a square tile in each of these outlined square spaces. And what we're trying to do is find the area of the rectangle, but we're going to put these in where I've got these dotted lines where they would fit. I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So I've got six squares that are fitting the way I did it right now. And that's wrong. It's not six square inches because we have a big gap here and a big gap here. Okay, so let's do the next one. What if we try to put them in this one and we're going to put one, two, and then we're going to try to overlap them the way these dotted lines are. Let's see if I can do this without them falling. That one fits nice. That one fits nice. But in order to make these fit, I'm going to have to make them overlap, see? So that would be 10 square inches, but they're all overlapping each other. They're all squished together. So that's wrong also. We have overlaps, so we can't do that. If we do it the way these dotted lines are, we put one square in each of these spaces very nicely. And we've got four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's get him up there. So we can say it's eight square inches. That's the correct way. There's no gaps and there's no overlaps. So these ways are wrong. We need to make sure they're all in a row. Very nice edge to edge like that. We can estimate the number of pink, then yellow tiles it will take to cover this gray rectangle. So we can't move them, but we can use our eyes to make an estimate. So if this is the pink size, how many do you think would fit into that gray rectangle? We need to make an estimate, so that's just a guess. I'm going to guess that maybe eight can fit inside of this gray rectangle. That's going to be my estimate. You could have a different number if you think a different number would fit. What about the yellow ones? Look at how little the yellow one is compared to this one. It looks like if I compare these two, that maybe four of these could fit in one pink one. Well, if each of these would be four yellow ones, I could do eight times four and get 32 and estimate 32 yellow ones will fit. If each one of these is equal to four yellow, that's eight times four because there's eight pink. 
And we will need more yellow tiles than pink because the yellow ones are smaller. We need more of them. We can use pink then yellow tiles to measure how many tiles it will actually take to cover the gray rectangle. So we can take our pink tiles, put one, two, three, four, we try not to have any gaps or overlaps. That's five. I thought it was going to be eight, and I was wrong. My estimate was too high. It's six. And I estimated 32 yellow squares, but actually we've got a row of six, so that's six. Another row of six, so that's 12. Another row of six, so that's 3 times 6, that's 18, and another row of 6, that's 24. And my estimate was 32, so I estimated a little too high. So our actual area for the pink squares is 6, and for our yellow ones, it's 24. And the pink tiles are larger, so we need fewer pink than yellow. We don't need as many of these because they're bigger. We can count to find the area of this figure. Each square is equal to one square inch. We count each square, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So there are thirteen unit squares in this figure. So the area is thirteen square inches. And we can write thirteen and abbreviate square as SQ period and inches as IN period and write it that way. We can count to find the area of this figure. Each of these little yellow squares is equal to one square centimeter. Centimeters are smaller than inches, so this square is smaller than our last example. We can count them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 unit squares. So the area is 21 square centimeters because each one was one square centimeter. And we can write a 21 and SQ period for square and CM period for centimeter. It's very important to use a label with an area measurement because the label lets us know what size unit we, was used to measure the area. One square centimeter, this square centimeter is its label. We know that was the measurement used for that unit size. Here's one square inch, that's the label for it. We know that the square is an inch on all sides. And if we don't know if it's centimeters or inches or yards or feet or meters, we can say one square unit. Now take a look at this we have here. Each unit square is one square centimeter. So each little square is one square centimeter. We can count to find the area of the figure. We see we have one, two, three, four, five coming down. That's how many rows we have, and we have one, two, three, four, five columns. So we have five rows with five in each row. There are five rows with five in each row, and we can skip count the squares by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So the area is equal to 25 square centimeters. Each square is one square centimeter. We have 25 of them. That's 25 square centimeters. Or we can look at the figure as an array. We did that back in the beginning of third grade. And we can multiply five rows times five in each row. We're going to talk about that in our very next lesson, 11.6. 
Sarah is laying gold colored tile on her floor. Each square of tile is one square foot. She's almost finished laying the tile, so she's not done yet, but she's almost finished. How many more square feet of tile has she finished than not finished? We might need to read this again. Sometimes we have to read a word problem two, three, four times until we completely understand what it's asking of us. We need the difference of the area of the gold squares to the area of the white squares. It's not asking how many she has left. It's not asking how many she has already done. It's asking the difference between the area of the ones that she's done to the ones that are not done. We count the area of the gold squares. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, or we could have skip counted five, ten, fifteen, one more is sixteen. So sixteen are finished. The area of the white squares, there's four. That's not finished. We need to find how many more are finished than not finished. That means we need to find the difference. And the difference between the 16 finished ones and the four not finished ones is 12 square feet more are finished than not finished. Each square was a square foot, so we know it's 12 square feet. And remember, feet is plural for foot. So this one's a little easier and similar, okay? It says each square is one square inch. How many more pink square inches are there than purple square inches? We need to find the difference between their square inches. There's one, two, three, four, five, six pink square inches. There's two purple square inches. The difference between them, how many more, we would do six minus two for subtraction to find the difference, difference which is equal to four square inches more pink than purple. So be very careful when you're reading these word problems. It doesn't want you to do eight minus the two because then we would know how many pink ones there are. It wants to know how many more pink there are than purple. So we need to take the total of pink the total of purple, and then do the subtraction. That's what made this one so tricky because we needed to find how many more gold ones there were than white ones. And take a look at this figure. How many squares need to be added to this figure so it has the same area as a square with side lengths of four units? So a square has four sides that are all the same length. I see four units here, but I don't see four units up here. Now remember, all the sides of a square are equal. Each side must be four units. And we can multiply four times four. That's four rows that would need to be here times the four columns would equal 16 square units in all. Now we can count the square units that are there and then use subtraction. We're supposed to have 16, but we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's 11 green ones there. We're supposed to have 16 units in all. That means five square units need to be added. If there were five more square units here, it would be 16 square units in all, and we'd have a square with four units on its sides. So it's supposed to look like this. So we would need to add one, two, three, four, five units up here so that it was a square with four unit sides. Now we don't have to use multiplication. That's a good way. It's quick, but we can also draw in the missing square units to give each side of the figure four units. So if you're very confused, you could just try getting your pencil and drawing them in. We have one, two, three, four, five units that we're adding to this to make it look like a square that has four unit 
on the side. That would be five units needed to make a square with a side length of four units. That's how many we're missing. So you could just draw them in. But it is important for you to know that because a square has sides that are all the same length, we would have to have four on this side and four on this side, and we can do four times four, which is 16 square units. Subtract the ones that we see here, which are 11, and then know how many more are needed to make it that nice square. So we can actually look at some figures that don't have missing pieces as an array and use multiplication. And we're going to talk about that next in our next lesson, 11.6. But remember, no gaps, no overlaps when we're doing these square units, OK? Have a really, really wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me. It helps me on YouTube. Bye.